Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today I'm going to perform an insulation resistance test on a three-phase motor using a megameter. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jumper Man Tech. Today we're going to be performing an insulation resistance test on a three-phase motor using a megameter. Specifically, I am using the Subco M500. And before we begin, if you find this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. And let's get straight into it. Here is the motor we're going to be performing our test today. This is a 208 volt, two horsepower, three-phase motor. Here's a quick look at the specs for this motor if anyone is interested, regardless of the volts, horsepower, or physical size of the motor. The steps in this video will all be the same. This is a test for a three-phase motor. First things first, we're going to turn off the power to our system and confirm with a multimeter that there is no voltage coming to your motor. Safety first. From here, we're going to open up the panel so we can get to the electrical. The cover is now off and let's take a closer look inside. Just a heads up, I did make a video on how to check a three-phase motor with a multimeter. You can still perform a resistance test, but for the most accurate results, you're going to want to use a megameter. So if we look closely, power comes in through here. Of course, I cut the wires. This motor is not in use. And we have three wires. So those are our three phases. From each leg to ground, you're going to have 120 volts. So we're going to begin this test by separating the wires from the motor because we're going to want to do a test specifically of the motor itself. We have removed the wires and if we take a closer look, each terminal is labeled L1, L2, and L3. So this is going to represent L1, this is going to represent L2, and this is going to represent L3. For today's video, we're going to be performing our test with the Subco M500. This is an affordable meter and I recommend this in every technician's tool bag, especially if you're on a budget. If anyone is interested in purchasing this tool, I will have a link in this video's description. This meter comes with two 9 inch leads and at the end we have two alligator clips. So what is an insulation resistance test? What are we actually checking? I'm going to leave that to a different video as far as a full description and explanation. But pretty much, we're testing the insulation around the windings of this motor. So before we begin, it's important to understand what we're going to be doing. It is fairly simple to perform this task. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to take one lead from the meter, go to line one or whichever one you want to start with. Let's just start in order. We're going to put one lead on line one and the other end we're going to put to ground, but specifically to the casing of the motor. And we're just going to repeat that test. So line one to ground, line two to ground, and line three to ground. But of course, when I say ground, I mean the motor's casing. For a better view, this is going to be our casing. I feel like this will be a good grounding point. Make sure your surface is clean so we have a good connection. I would even recommend find your place on the casing where you want to connect and even sand it down just so you have a clean connection and it's going to give you the most accurate results. Without a doubt, the Subco M500 is extremely easy to use and definitely the most affordable meter you'll find on the market. This is widely available at any supply house and once again, a link will be in this video's description. So how do we use this? Well, there's actually only one button. There's a set of LED lights here that will give you the indication of your reading. We have three sets of colors. This one is red, these three are yellow, and these are green. If you get the red light, of course, you are bad. If you get the yellow light, then we have a caution, and it's on its way out to being bad, and this motor should be replaced before you have a disaster. And from here, if you get the green light, of course you are good, but always check with the specs of the motor you're checking. Specifically, let's say if it's a three-phase compressor and an inverter compressor, you're going to want to see the ratings of the manufacturer because even though you might get a good reading here, according to the specs of that motor, it still might be faulty. And this meter has helped me diagnose 
plenty of those motors and really saves the day. So pretty much we're gonna put one lead to one line and the other line we're gonna ground it to the casing of the motor. You press the button and check your lights. So right now I have one lead on L1 and the other lead to the casing of the motor. And we're gonna go over to the meter, hold the button down for a couple seconds and see what we get. Just a heads up, when performing this test, I highly recommend you do some research on what this meter is and how it works. Because safety truly is first, we are about to apply 500 volts to the windings of this motor. So let's press down the button and see what we get. Right there, we actually saw the lights go past, so we are actually went above 1000 mega ohms. It says right here, above 1000 mega ohms, there is no light. Let's just do that one last time. And there you have it. In this case, we are good. The ground will stay in place and we're simply going to switch over from L1 now to L2. We're gonna press our button and continue the process. All right, same thing, we are good. From here, we're gonna take off one terminal from L2 and we're just simply gonna to go to L3 and repeat the process. All right, you saw it for yourselves, we went past 1000 mega ohms. In this case, we are more than good, we are beyond good. And that's pretty much it, it is very simple. It's just important to understand how this works and the process, safety is always first, I definitely always advocate for that and that's pretty much it you're going to take one lead to one line and the other to ground and you're going to check each line this way phase one phase two phase three line one l2 l3 however you would like to describe it <laughs> and yeah that's pretty much it if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe and i'll catch you all next time